Hollywood Brown kind of deserves to be mentioned among the most underrated receivers in the NFL. You look at Marquise Brown's reception perception, all four years of his career, he's been over 80% success rate versus zone coverage. You do see a lot of green on his routes, but he's a 27th percentile score versus man. That's where my mind gets kind of twisted into a little bit of a pretzel when it comes to Hollywood Brown. Look at the release. There's your separation. Great route. Stutter and go. Gets by clean. That is unbelievable. May be the greatest catch I've ever seen. If you go to the website, uh, receptionperception.com, and you go check out the profile that just dropped here on Hollywood Brown, I'm always surprised, I really am, by how much green is on this man's route chart. You know, uh, he's got a ton of green everywhere on his profile. I think that would surprise a lot of folks. I know that surprised me, Matt. Yeah, I actually think now that Tyler Lockett, uh, he's getting mentioned in, on my list as a top five route runner. I think he's pr- kind of he's not all the way there. He still needs more recognition. Uh, I th- think he's probably still one of the most underrated receivers in the NFL. But I actually yeah. think Hollywood Brown kind of deserves to be mentioned among the most underrated receivers in the NFL. Um, he's not he's not a number one. I- I'll get off the top here by saying that i don't think he is a he's a number one type of receiver he came in the league as like a pretty refined player uh you know obviously he's cousins with antonio brown um Mm -hmm. antonio brown famously you know a crazy person but also famously a great (laughs) route runner a great technician and i actually i got a chance to talk to marquise before the draft and like he kind of went into detail about how much he really bounced back then bounced ideas off of his cousin antonio brown and, and really that relationship went into a lot of the technical refinement in his game but i think you look at marquise brown's reception perception all four years of his career he's been over 80 percent success rate versus zone coverage he's gotten as high as 85.4 percent last year is at 82.1 percent which was 11th best among the players sampled from the 2022 nfl season and that's important because if you look at him throughout his career the last three years he's faced zone coverage on 64.5, 68.1, and 65.3% of his sampled routes. Some of that is because he plays with mobile quarterbacks, Lamar Jackson mobile quarterback, Kyler Murray mobile quarterback. Um, But he's also just a guy, again, that because he faces all that zone coverage, and and he also plays a lot off the line of scrimmage. He's primarily like a flanker and sometimes moves into the slot. That's his best role. Uh, and I know we'll expand on that more in a second, but because of that role, he faces a lot of zone coverage, and he's actually pr- probably one of the more underrated zone beaters in the NFL right now. Which is interesting. Um, you know, with that all that speed, you would think, okay, can this guy play? And, and and again, not just the speed, Matt, but where he lines up, he generally lines up as an outside wide receiver. I hear what you're saying. You, you'd like to you know, see him a little off the line and, and mixing into the slot as well, but I think primarily people view him as a guy that plays outside. Um, I think he's a, uh, to me, I think he, from a construction standpoint, like a team construction standpoint, he would be ideal as your number two, uh, because again, mm-hmm. you, you want a guy that can, that can fly a little bit playing outside, doing those different type of things. Um, it's his man score that surprises me though. Right. And again, you marry this with, and I know you say it all the time. Just, don't look at just the colors, man. Like you got to like, get some of the context in there too. But again, going back to the route tree, you do see a lot of green on his routes. But he's a 27th percentile score versus man. And again, so how do you kind of juxtapose those two things together? And, and that's where my mind gets kind of twisted into a little bit of a pretzel when it comes to Hollywood Brown. Yeah, well, again, it comes back to the fact that he's running against so much zone coverage. He, it's, that's going to boost the averages overall when he's the 11th best player last year against zone coverage. Uh, but he's not that great against man coverage, but he's running 65.3% of his routes against zone coverage. So if the way to boil it down simply is more of his routes divorced of coverage were good than bad. He's the consummate flanker receiver. You know, those guys are going to run against zone coverage more often than man coverage. Generally, the more you line up off the line of scrimmage, the more you're going to be that flanker receiver, uh, the more you're going to run against zone coverage. I think he makes the most sense in that role. So the press man stuff is, is what keeps him from being, and look, Size isn't everything, but he is a small guy, and he's a he's a small guy from a weight perspective, and he doesn't have the same frame, you know, as a guy like uh, Devontae Smith, who has the long arms and has more of like a catch radius overall, and he's just a better technician as well. So I think that's why he kind of struggles against man coverage, is simply or press coverage, simply because of the size. But 
the fact that he's so good against zone does sort of offset that. It would be very difficult to build your passing attack around a guy like Hollywood Brown as your true, like, number one receiver, even though from a speed perspective, um, I, I, he has some traits, I think, that are, are certainly appetizing for our number one, but he just doesn't quite get there uh, in terms of some of the other benchmarks. Uh, yeah, I totally agree. And I think, he, again, that's why he's not really like a true one. And even last year, he was producing really well for uh, Cardinals offense without DeAndre Hopkins, right? The targets and the and some of the right. production from that stretch was really good. But I, I think, man, and we really never got to see it, right? Because when Hopkins got back, like Brown had de that was dealing with a foot injury. That is one thing to note with him is that he was dealing sort of with he, another foot injury. This has been a problem for him before. Yep. If you look at his alignment data and reception perception on the like on the surface, right? Uh, Sixty one point seven percent snaps outside uh was majority on the line 56 percent but those numbers were really inflated by the four games that i sampled without hopkins to start the year when brown was like a pure boundary receiver he was the top guy on the team and he was running mostly i wouldn't say as like a true x because cliff kingsbury's offense is kind of weird from that standpoint but he was a pure boundary receiver and on the line of scrimmage and then you look at when hopkins got back even with Hopkins playing a little bit more in the slot than the normal under Cliff Kingsbury, right. he was still primarily outside and on the line of scrimmage. Uh, and, and that really actually helped Hollywood Brown be more in this like pre-snap motion role, be more uh, off the line of scrimmage. I think Marquise Brown is going to have to be the top target getter for this team. Ideally, you want him as a two. We don't even really know who's going to be throwing footballs for the majority of the Arizona Cardinals season. So that's a rather large question, but um I don't know. At first, I thought there was like a zero percent chance that Kyler Murray plays this year. Now I think there might be more of like a, eh, like he probably plays at some point this year. And when Kyler's out there, I think him and uh, Brown, dating back to college, have had really good chemistry. And I think that this sort of makes. It, we'll see how teams defend Kyler Murray coming off of an a, a late season ACL tear last year. But if they're still going to run a lot of those zone coverages against this team, we know that Marquise Brown can can get open on those plays.